Here with me to discuss this and a lot more, CBSN political contributor and Democratic strategist Liz Smith, CBSN political contributor, Democratic strategist, and founding partner at 270 Strategies, Linda Tran, and CBSN political contributor and Republican strategist Leslie Sanchez. All right, Liz, first to you. It was really interesting to watch that interaction just there. We saw Senator Kane jump in at the end of that answer. What did you make of that dynamic that we saw there? Well, you know what? I'd like to defer to Linda on this because she is a Tim <laughs> Kane expert. Right. So Yeah, what do you think, Linda? Well, you know, something about Tim Kane is he fights really hard for his team, and I think that he puts his whole heart into everything, and you saw that on display here. The other thing that we saw that's worth noting is clearly they're very comfortable with each other. It's, it's a clear indication of why he ended up on the ticket in the end when there were a slate of a lot of folks that were being discussed. I expect that he's going to be supporting her this way in a lot of different interviews to come. So, Linda, let's go over what he brings to the ticket. When you see the two of them, uh, what was it that he provided uh, in terms of balance for her? Well, first and foremost, he's got an incredible resume. Here is a guy who has never lost an election from the time he ran for city council to being mayor of Richmond to lieutenant governor, then governor, and then senator of Virginia. He's somebody who's fought really hard and won every single time. So that's certainly important. There are three things that I would say about him that I think make him a standout among elected leaders today. One is he's got this keen policy intellect. Two is, as we saw during their speech yesterday, he's incredibly authentic, really personable and engaging. You know, and the third thing is, frankly, he's got some real political savvy. And these are all things that I think he's going to need to bring to bear given the 2016 cycle so far. All right. Now let me turn to you, Liz, and let me ask you about, uh, you know, Donald Trump has been making a play and trying to make a play for Bernie Sanders voters talking about the system, uh, talking about now the choice of Tim Kaine as Hillary Clinton's running mate. Uh, he called it, quote, very disrespectful to Sanders supporters. What do you make of that? Look, Donald Trump is clearly trying to do what he does best, which is troll. Um, but I don't think there's a chance in hell that Bernie Democrats are going to go for Trump. We've already seen in the polling that 85 percent of Bernie supporters are backing Hillary. And I think it's going to grow exponentially after this convention. Look, Donald Trump is on the wrong side of so many important issues and um, just trying to play up this rig system stuff is really not going to work. Uh, Leslie, let me ask you, what do you think about that? Is there a chance that some people who were Bernie Sanders supporters who felt that the system was in fact rigged might actually be somewhat sympathetic to that argument? Sure. I don't think 85 percent is 100 percent. So there's always a small percent in there when you're talking about numbers mm -hmm. and three and an election that's going to be moved by three and four percent either way. So some of those voters are going to sit out, right? They're not going to be pleased with either candidate. It's going to happen on the Republican side as well. We're already hearing about that. But it's more the independents who are looking for that certain kind of leadership. Consistently, for example, when we were down on the southwest border and you're talking to military veterans of Hispanic descent, for example, they said they were not particularly pleased with Hillary Clinton. They would have liked Kasich next. And then they go, well, OK, maybe Donald Trump. So Trump is not that first, second, even third choice. But he is that alternate because it is not in a vacuum. Now we have a very clear line, one versus the other. All right. Uh, let's talk about what's happening this week. Linda, lots of drama on the eve of your convention here. <laughs> you've got these, Liz is shaking her head already. So you've got these leaked emails, now reports that Debbie Wasserman Schultz isn't even going to be gaveling in here. What do you make of all of this? Look, we knew when we saw those emails that the optics were not good. And what we're hearing about today is really people taking that to the next step. Uh, what we want is to show a ton of unity and a ton of energy and a ton of excitement here all week long. And so I, I'm not terribly surprised. Yes. And Liz has a definite I'm, perspective yes. on this. I would love to jump in here. Um, as I was Martin O'Malley's deputy campaign manager during his campaign, and he really led the charge against Debbie Wasserman Schultz for rigging the debate um, schedule. You know, we were talking about this before. She scheduled debates on holiday weekends during big football games. She went out of her way to make sure that as few people saw the Democratic debates as possible. I think she was going to have problems here no matter what. Um, but it was a very smart decision to take her out of the convention completely because there's, it would have been inevitable that she would have been booed off the stage. And that is a visual that Democrats did not need. All right. So then the question is, Liz and Linda, but Liz, let me ask you first, what does that leave Sanders delegates? You know, there's a lot of discontent out there. We talked to Nomiki Konst off the top of the show. There's a lot of anger about the way all of this has unfolded, and now you have these emails, which Senator Sanders himself says seem to confirm the suspicions that they had all along. Sure, but if you saw Senator Sanders talking this morning, what he also said was, look, these emails are bad. They 
confirmed what we already knew about the DNC, but what's most important here is electing Hillary Clinton. So look, this is an inter-party fight. It's unfortunate. I think it's something we need to learn from going forward, but the stakes of this election are too high, and I think Senator Sanders is going to make that point in his speech on, on Monday, um, and that saying that his backers need to put all this drama aside and go out and knock on doors and vote for Hillary Clinton. What do you think, Linda? I, look, I think at the end of the day, voters care very, very little about what's happening in the right. inside politics of the system totally and the process right. and the party. What they care about is, are they going to have somebody sitting in the Oval Office that actually represents them, that cares about and addresses the issues that they're dealing with on a regular basis? And I think ultimately the conversation ends up being about that as much as we insiders right. obsess about the mechanics of it all. All right. I have to ask, Leslie, as a Republican, you're a resident Republican, <laughs> a little bit of schadenfreude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I'll just watch from here. You know, I, I really haven't had, had a lot in, in this debate going on. You know, again, I think that the bottom line, when we talk about these two, we, we, we heard the boos at our convention, and we saw the effect, and it's nice to see that they learned and recalibrated so quickly <laughs> to avoid that same scenario, because that would have been the story for the next few days, and they have a series of really important speeches to get a across. So. Yeah, so because the storyline coming out of Cleveland was whether or not there would be this sense of unity coming out of the convention, and then when we well, heard Ted Cruz his speech, that wasn't the case. No, you had the boos, and actually it did unify the party because the people that were left behind that still appreciated Ted's voice all of a sudden were so disgusted that he didn't jump in line, very much kind of the same argument, different different party, that they immediately rushed over and, and, it, and said, we're going to be loyal soldiers to the Republican Party. So that actually did turn out to be a benefit. It was just a painful one. Yeah, and, and it was a nasty visual. I mean, I think we can all agree that, well, actually, we, we agree that it was a good thing for us, but I think you can agree that that night, it was a little ugly and probably something they, the Republicans it, it, didn't want. It was a little ugly, but the, the ugly part is all the people turning their back on mm -hmm. Ted Cruz. And if you're going to go out there and do that and basically be a protester at your own Republican convention, yeah. then you deserve the rep, you know the mm -hmm. retribution. Really quickly, though, open question about Sanders delegates, right? What they might choose to do, don't you think, Linda? Potentially. I think that they've come to uh, a certain agreement about future roles around superdelegates moving forward, and that's certainly a victory for folks in the Sanders camp who've been very passionately um, urging that there be significant changes to whether or not delegates are obligated to the results of their state. And, and I think that that's pretty seismic. It's a pretty seismic shift, and they should be happy about that. We'll see what happens. But having their guy out there cheering really loudly yeah. for the nominee and the, then the full ticket with my old boss, Tim Kaine, <laughs> is a good thing for all of us. All right. Elizabeth, Linda Tran, <laughs> Leslie Sanchez, thank you all. We'll be talking to you throughout the week.